Light and peace in Jesus Christ be with you this holy night. Thank you for joining us on this Monday of Jesus' Passion. During this holiest of weeks, we will encounter six different people who had front row seats to the Passion of Jesus. They will tell their story and invite us to be part of Jesus' Passion as well. Sometimes the story doesn't seem real to those who have heard it so many times, but it was. It was painful and rich and life-changing for the individuals and generations of Christians to come. Listen, hear their story, and see what Jesus wants us to learn about faith and discipleship this night. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I invite you to join me in reading the Word of God found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 12 through 19. On the following day after Palm Sunday, when Jesus and his disciples came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. What got into Jesus, I will never know. He cursed a fig tree, for goodness sakes, because it had no fruit on it. It was early spring, too early for the tree to bear fruit. He knew that, and yet he cursed the fig tree for bearing no fruit. Then when he got to the temple and to the court where pilgrims paid their required temple tax and brought their animals for their sacrifice of atonement, he overturned their tables. Money, animals, and people scattered everywhere. Sure, tensions were high since Jesus and his crowd entered Jerusalem at the same time as the Roman army. Why, the city was bustling with people. No distancing there. Jesus got wound up in a way I have never seen him before. Remember, he welcomed children healed sick people, and ate with outsiders. He brought love and peace to all he met. But today before noon, he has cursed a fig tree and turned over the tables of the money changers. He is worked up about something. I'm afraid that this is going to lead to trouble. Is this really the way to win people to his cause? Cursing fig trees and turning over tables? He said, is it not written, 
My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. I recognize those words. He was quoting the prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah. The gospel writers say he was teaching when he spoke those words. What exactly was he trying to teach us? What was behind his cursing the fig tree and overturning the tables? Was he calling us to pray? Was he calling us to worship God? Was he calling us to bear fruit in our lives? Later in the week, Jesus will call his disciples to stay awake with him and to pray. You know how that turns out. Could Jesus' anger be our misconstruing of what faith looks like? Have we turned our worship into isolated moments of me and Jesus rather than being inspired by God's spirit to love God and our neighbors at a deeper level? Would Holy Week have ended the same if Jesus' followers had spent more time in prayer? Is it not written, Jesus taught, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. Who are you praying for? Are we praying at all? Is praying to God a way that God bears fruit in our lives? The Gospel of John says, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. It is Monday night of Holy Week. How will you abide with Jesus in prayer this week? Who are you praying for? How do you want God to bear fruit in your life even in the time of isolation? I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory, I sing the new, new song, twill be the old, old story. That I have loved so long I love to tell the story Twill be my theme and glory To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and his love To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and his love As we enter into a time of prayer, I will offer people for us to pray for. And I invite you to pray out loud the names that are on your heart and that come to mind. Together, let us pray to the Lord. For the people of this congregation. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer and those in trouble around the world, Lord, hear our prayer. For the concerns of this local community at this crossroads, Lord, hear our prayer for all people on the front lines of this pandemic. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for those who have this virus, for their families, and for an end to this pandemic. Lord, 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the people around the world, and it's all the leaders of all nations. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth you have given to our care. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children and the elderly. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the communion of saints. Let us pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying Haygood's NLI prayer. God of our future, we know Haygood United Methodist Church is located at this crossroad for a reason. Pour out your spirit upon us so we might be bold enough to seek it, have eyes to behold it, and a depth of faith to live it. Make us a beacon of God's love to all. Amen. Receive this benediction. Protect everyone, O Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over everyone as we sleep, that awake we may watch and pray with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Good night.